In this video, we're going to talk about inductance, which is of crucial technological importance. In particular, how a loop of wire can induce a current in another loop of wire, and even more crucial, how it can induce a current in itself. So let's start off with a loop of wire. And we'll connect it to a battery. I have a switch here. And let's have a second loop of wire right nearby. Only this time there's no battery and it's just connected to an ammeter, say. Now what happens when we close the switch here? A current starts to flow. It's down at the front. And so because you have a current going around in this direction, from the right-hand rule that generates a magnetic field, which starts off very small and gets bigger and bigger as the current gets larger, going in this direction. If the two loops are close together, most of the magnetic field lines coming out of here will also go through the second loop. And so you've got no magnetic field ramping up to a full strength magnetic field in the second one. And that will generate electromotive force here. So the electric field to begin with is like this, the electric field at the end is like that, so the change in electric field delta E is in that direction, so minus delta E is in that direction, and so from the right hand rule that means we get an electromotive force in this direction, electric field around that direction from every loop, which gives you a current going that way, opposite direction from the first one. This is called inducing a voltage in a current. So this circuit has induced a current and it's a voltage in that circuit. This in itself is very useful. It's how wireless charging systems work for mobile phones and for toothbrushes. But perhaps even more important is what happens if you just have one loop. So here we've got one thing on the battery and our switch. Now when you turn this on, the current starts to flow, and therefore a magnetic field is generated. But think about this loop. You've gone from no magnetic field inside it to a positive magnetic field, and so the magnetic field is actually going to induce a voltage in the very same circuit that's causing it. Faraday's law applies all the time. Just because this circuit is the one that's actually generating the magnetic field doesn't mean it isn't affected by it. So as the magnetic field increases, this is also going to generate a voltage going the other way around and try and oppose the current. So effectively when you've just turned it on it's kind of like you've replaced the inductor with another battery pointing reverse direction from the first one. And this is indeed a general principle. Whenever you have a wire loop or anything like that with a magnetic field, whenever you try and increase the current temporarily while the current and the voltage is increasing, it acts like a battery pointing backwards. This is actually called Lenz's law, which says loops always fight you. Whenever you try and do something, they push back. It also works the other way around. Let's say you had a current flowing in a magnetic field and then you open the switch so it turns off. In that case, the magnetic field that started off big becomes small. So the change in magnetic field is pointing that way. So minus the change in magnetic field is pointing this way, so from the right-hand rule, it's giving you a voltage the other way. So that means when you switch things off, it actually, or cut the voltage down, it acts as a battery the other way around. So once again, it's fighting what you're trying to do. So whenever you try and increase the current, it fights you and gives a voltage pushing backwards. Whenever you try to decrease the current, it fights you and gives a voltage pushing forward to try and keep the current moving.